A few months ago, I randomly bumped into a producer, a Hollywood producer who was filming something in my city. Hectic. When I say bumped, I was actually approached for reasons completely unrelated to screenwriting. See, our kids were just playing together. That seems to be the way I befriend adults these days. Anyway, we exchanged pleasantries and somehow we got to talking about work. He said that he was a producer filming a movie here. And when he asked me what I did, well, I had a bit of a strange reaction because I managed to mention that I write screenplays, but that most, if not all of my money comes from my freelance work. What was strange is that I picked up how squeaky my voice was when I was talking about screenwriting and then how I found my confidence when I was talking about my freelance gigs. Anyway, I didn't want to seem too keen and turn this light-hearted moment into somewhat of a networking opportunity. So I changed the topic to kids. But the thing is, I left feeling disappointed in how feeble and coy I was around someone in the industry and that I didn't have the guts to champion what it is that I pour my heart into. I mean, you guys know, I've yet to sell a screenplay. I've written scripts for commercials, for videos and for radio ads but I've yet to sell a movie script. So am I even allowed to call myself a screenwriter? I spoke about this to a friend. My friend had the most beautiful response. She asked me if I write screenplays. I said, oh, of course. And then she just reminded me that that's enough. That makes me a screenwriter. She went on to remind me that Van Gogh didn't sell a painting during his entire lifetime. And that doesn't mean he wasn't an artist. Of course he was. That comment was helpful, but it reminded me of the movie Tick Tick Boom where you'll see Andrew Garfield's character portray Jonathan Larson. Spoiler alert, but Jonathan died unexpectedly at 35 years old, a week before his musical Rent became a global smash hit. Seriously, if you ever need inspiration, go watch that movie. It's beautiful. Like Van Gogh, this guy had heaps of success, but he never lived to enjoy it. Anyway, all of this inspired me to pause and to identify some small, maybe not so obvious things that anyone can do to boost their confidence as a writer. I hope some of these will be helpful to you. I've tried to create a list of people who have had success later in life. I'd hopefully like to see a screenplay of mine sold. So even though stories like Van Gogh and Jonathan Larson are inspiring, it can be a tad depressing to think that I could go an entire lifetime without having any of my work find success. I mean, that could be the case, which is out of my control. So it's helpful to be aware of people like Fritz Roll, who only turned his life around at 40. And then another example is Vera Wang, who only entered the fashion industry at 40. Stan Lee created his first comic, Fantastic Four, at 39. He then went on to create the legendary Marvel Universe. And then we have Martha Stewart, who only published her first cookbook at 41. I could go on. I find confidence in standing on the shoulders of these giants, who know exactly how it feels where I'm at now, and yet they chose to never give up on their dreams. Next, I try to be mindful with the words that I use. So sometimes when I'm writing a screenplay, I can find myself hitting a wall and wanting to quit. And you know, sometimes I do quit. <laughs> but I try to do so gently. When I'm in a bit of a tough place with a screenplay, then I'll say something like, okay, this doesn't seem to be working right now. That's right, let's pause on it. Maybe work on something else for a little bit. And I know something's gonna hit me when I least expect it. And then I'll go back to that other project enthusiastically. At this point, I may tap into that writing routine that I made a video on a while ago, the perfect writing routine that only takes 10 minutes. I'll link that one in the card somewhere or in the description if you haven't seen that. But the point is that I'm gentle on myself. I don't push anything or force anything to happen if it's just not happening. I must give Taika Waititi credit for this approach because I remember hearing in an interview somewhere that he said that he sometimes lets screenplayers rest for years before he goes back to them. My advice that no one ever takes is take as long as you can to write. I will write and then I will take, I'll put the script away and I won't look at it for maybe six months, maybe a year. Sometimes I would take two years away from the script. Hunt for the Wilder People, I wrote the first draft in maybe 2004. And uh, we shot that in 2015. You do the math. That's just the process. And, the, and, you know, and in that time, I made three other features. So, yeah, this, you're kind of like drifting around all your different projects. But, um, yeah, that's the key is really, yeah, it is, to, is to take your time. Give yourself the time. There's a beauty to letting a project rest for a while, I found. And that's because I've been writing for seven years and I've changed and grown so much in seven years. So when I revisit projects from the early days and I look at the story there, 
I'm amazed to see how much I can improve what I've already written just because of the growth and change that's happened in my life. And I guess the new perspective in which I'm facing something that I maybe hit a wall with a couple of years ago. So being gentle with my words around my stories have helped me find a confidence in them, even if they're not at their best yet. Next, I try to focus on play. Ever since I can remember, I've written stories that at times I forced my brothers or my friends to participate in. As I moved from child to adult, it felt like I'd lost a bit of my playful attitude because I felt the need to be serious and well grown up. But I've come to learn that my favorite grown ups are those who enjoy an element of play in their lives, those who are not bound by busyness, and those who are still able to laugh at themselves. I aim to bring this element of play into my writing and I try to remind myself that this is fun and that I'm allowed to enjoy it. I find that there is a confidence that comes about being joyful in the pursuit of something. Next, I try to focus on progress as opposed to perfection. I didn't study any of this. I've purely learned by being passionate and by making plenty of mistakes. <laughs> Crikey, I made so many mistakes in the early days of screenwriting, but luckily I seem to be okay with feedback. I enjoy having my blind spots pointed out because that means I can get better at something. Knowing that I'm a far better writer now than I was when I started seven years ago is so uplifting. I find that confidence emerges with incremental signs of progress. Oh, this is a goodie. Perspective is a reminder that I can get into my head about things that do not have to be issues. If I know that I write, I'm allowed to call myself a writer. In the past, I've been so concerned about what people think about me and that if I said that I write, but I'm unable to say that I wrote a film that has been produced, then I'm undeserving of the title of writer. You see, I've come to learn that the part where people talk about jobs at conversations is usually so small, people either want to know more or they don't. They're either impressed or they're not, or they're not paying attention. They're actually just being polite and making conversation. I've actually come to find a bit of humor in all of this. And I've learned to identify the people who get what I'm passionate about, as well as the people who I will never be good enough for. But this has got nothing to do with whether I'm a screenwriter or not. So trying to look at things from the outside in has given me a lot of perspective and has taken off quite a bit of that pressure that I used to put on myself. And it's helped me find confidence in the work of it all, as opposed to of how things appear in certain situations. On that note, I'd like to end this video with some wise words from Dan Brown. Write like no one is watching, because no one is watching. And then some slightly adjusted wise words from my friend. If you write stories, then you're a writer. 